Hi there. In this video I'll explain how to answer vector addition questions both by scale diagram or mathematically. Here's an example from the 2015 National 5 paper. A ship of mass 5 times 10 to the power of 6 kilograms leaves a port. Its engine produces a forward force of 8 times 10 to the power of 3 newtons. A tugboat pushes against one side of the ship as shown. The tugboat applies a pushing force of 6 times 10 to the power of 3 newtons. A part 1 then says, by scale drawing or otherwise determine the size of the resultant force acting on the ship. So here's the first way we can answer the question, by scale diagram. The first thing we need in a scale diagram is obviously our scale. I'll be using one where 1 centimetre on our diagram represents 1 times 10 to the power of 3 newtons. You should always use a scale which allows your diagram to be as large as possible while still fitting into the space provided on your answer paper. First, I'll draw the 8 times 10 to the power of 3 newtons force, which, using our scale, is represented by a line 8 centimetres long, from left to right. The most important thing to remember when drawing our diagram is that vectors are added nose to tail. This means that where one vector ends, the next vector begins. So we draw our next line, the one representing the downwards force of 6 times 10 to the power of 3 newtons, at the end of our first line, like this. Using our scale again, this line should be 6 centimetres long. We then draw a line from the start of our first vector to the end of the second one. We should now draw arrows on our vectors to show their direction. One arrow on the vector is being added, and two on the resultant vector. To find the size of the resultant vector, we bring the ruler back in, and you can see that the line's 10 centimetres long. So using our scale, the resultant force acting on the ship is 10 multiplied by 1 times 10 to the power of 3, is equal to 10 times 10 to the power of 3 newtons, or 1 times 10 to the power of 4 newtons. Part 2 of the question asks us to determine the direction of the resultant force relative to the 8 times 10 to the power of 3 newtons force. So we'll need to remember a protractor, obviously. We're measuring this angle because this is where we've started our scale diagram. I also drew the 8 times 10 to the power of 3 newtons force first, so that I could measure the angle between it and the resultant force, as we're asked to do this in part of the question. When I turn the protractor around, you should see that the angle works out to be 37 degrees. So the direction is 37 degrees to the 8 times 10 to the power of 3 newton force. Here's the other way I could have answered the question. No ruler or protractor required. Now I could have drawn the diagram as before, but this would only need to be a sketch and not to scale this time. If I want to find the resultant force, and we'll call it F, mathematically, then we can use Pythagoras. The resultant force is the hypotenuse in a right angle triangle. So F squared is equal to 8 times 10 to the power of 3 squared plus 6 times 10 to the power of 3 squared. We can then take the square root of both sides, which gives us a resultant force of 1 times 10 to the power of 4 newtons. To find the direction, we use trigonometry, so couture. Remember, it's this angle we need to find, since it's the one at the beginning of a vector diagram, and allows us to find the direction relative to the 8 times 10 to the power of 3 newtons force. I'm using the symbol theta. The tan function is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. So tan theta is equal to 6 times 10 to the power of 3 divided by 8 times 10 to the power of 3, which works out as 0.75. So our angle, theta, is equal to tan to the minus 1, 0 0.75, is equal to 37 degrees. And again, we should state that this is to the 8 times 10 to the power of 3 newtons force. A part 3 asks us to calculate the size of the acceleration of the ship. So we use this equation, F is equal to ma, where F is a resultant force of 1 times 10 to the power of 4 newtons, m is the mass of the ship, which was stated earlier in the question, 5 times 10 to the power of 6 kilograms, and A is the acceleration we're trying to calculate. We can then rearrange the equation to give us acceleration A by dividing both sides by 5 times 10 to the power of 6. This gives us an acceleration of 2.0 times 10 to the power of negative 3 metres per second per second. You can see that I've written the answer with the same number of significant figures as given in the question. I'll talk more about this in another video. The last part of the question says, Out in the open sea, the ship comes to rest. Explain with the aid of a label diagram why the ship floats. 
Again, we'll give ourselves more space for the diagram. If the ship is at rest, then there's no force pushing it forward and no frictional force acting on it. The only forces acting on it are the weight force acting downwards and the force of the water on the ship acting upwards. This could also be called the buoyancy force or the upthrust. From Newton's first law then, since the ship is stationary, these forces must be balanced. And so ends the question. For more information on upcoming videos, summary sheets and so on, visit physics-podcast.co.uk. Thank you for listening.